Chapter 6 begins by looking at rate functions um, and figuring out how to find the area between those functions and the x-axis or the t-axis and also what that area means. So for example, um, here's a graph that represents the rate of water leaking out of a tank in gallons per minute over the course of an hour. So the question is, how many gallons of water leaked? Um, we can see that the vertical axis is in gallons per minute, and the horizontal axis is in minutes. So if we multiply gallons per minute times gallon times minutes, our minutes cancel, and we wind up with the number of gallons. Um, and that's kind of why area why we're going with area here. We're looking at the area under the curve um, as a total amount so of gallons. And this works because we have a rate function that is graphed. So, um, and that's why the units work out. So my method is going to be to cut this shape into shapes that I know how to find the area of. So I see a big um, rectangle, which is 8 by 50. So this big rectangle is 400 gallons. And then I see a right triangle here with a which is one half two times fifty, which would be fifty, and another right triangle which is ten times fifty, nope, ten times eight, and it's a triangle. So one half ten times eight. be 40. And so the amount of water that leaked would be 490 gallons. So you graph a rate and you find the area between that rate and the t-axis that gives you the amount. Um, we also talked yesterday about LRAM, MRAM, and RAM and also trapezoids. Um, LRAM means I'm going to take this curve here and I'm going to draw left hand rectangles under it. So before I do that, I'm just going to sketch it out. Very rough sketch. If I'm at t equals zero, I would be at r equals five. If I'm at t equals two, I'd be at r equals eight. If I'm at t equals 5, I'd be at r equals 10, and if I'm at t equals 7, I'd be at r equals 11. If I'm going to use LRAM, that means I would like to use the left-hand side of the rectangles to estimate the area here. So each rectangle, I'm going to use the left-hand point for it, and what you notice is that you never really use the last value in your table. So I'm not going to use the 11 because that would be the right side of that um, rectangle. And so my first rectangle has a width of 2 and a height of 5. And my next rectangle has a width of 3 and a height of 8. And my last rectangle has a width of 2 and a height of 10. I wrote 20, but I said 2. So using LRAM, I would have an area of 54. And since this is a rate function of some sort, then my amount would be 54. Um, if we want, with the same numbers, if we want to use RAM, we would, I think it's always helpful to plot them out, just at least roughly. Um, I would use the right side of the rectangles, and that means that I would not be using the um, this value. I would not be using the first value. I would be starting with the 11. Be 
because now I'm using the, um, the right side of the rectangle. I'm not using the left side. Um, so the first rectangle has a width of 2 and a height of 11. The next rectangle has a width of 3 and a height of 10. And my first rectangle has a width of 2 and a height of 8. Right, so our sum would be 16 plus 30 plus 22 or uh, 68. And this is a bigger value than the other one. And it makes sense that this is a bigger value because this looks like an increasing function. So the right side will overestimate the function and the left side would underestimate the function because it's increasing. So the right side would be higher than the left. Okay, we can also use MRAM in a table. Um, when you use MRAM in a table, though, we have to have a whole lot of information in the table that we're not making use of. So this would be one rectangle, and the midpoint of that rectangle would be t equals 2, and this would be the second rectangle, and the midpoint of that rectangle would be um, t equals 8. So if I were going to use MRAM for this um, problem, I would be doing a width of 4 times a height of 8, plus a width of 4 times a height of 15. Um, with MRAM in a table, you're going to need a whole bunch of information that you're just not using. Um, so this would be 32 plus 60, or 92. Um, a slightly harder problem is looking at your rate as an equation and then estimating the area for that. So if my velocity is sine of t, I can find the um, distance by looking at the area between the velocity and the t-axis. I'm going to use six rectangles and RAM to estimate this area. So that means that each of my rectangles would be pi over 6 wide. Um, and it means that I'm going to be using the right side. So I'll be evaluating my sine function first at pi over 6. Okay, so I would say, and I'm going to write this kind of a weird way so that we can um, start thinking about this in a different way. So it's going to be pi over 6 times v of pi over 6. plus pi over 6, because each width is the same, times v of, um, now, so our first rectangle was evaluated at pi over 6. Our next one will be evaluated at pi over 3. And our width is always pi over 6. And then we'd be evaluated at pi over 2. And then we'd be at um, 2 pi over 3. And then our last rectangle, well, our last rectangle actually has a height of 0. That last rectangle is, we're using six rectangles, but one of the rectangles doesn't really have any area at all. Our last one would be evaluated at 5 pi over 6. Okay, so um, if I um, if I take out the pi over six because they're all going to be pi over six wide, then I'm just doing a sum of the sine function at those points. So it'd be one half plus three over two plus um, pi over two would be one plus root three over two plus one half again. So it's pi over six times two plus root three. And notice how that's an exact answer. It's an approximation, but my approximation is going to be the same as your approximation. And that means that the distance traveled then would be um, pi over six times two plus root three. 
Um, and then the last one that we touched on was finding area using trapezoids. So a pool contains a thousand gallons of water. Over the next six hours, water is pumped into the pool at a rate of P over T gallons per hour. Use trapezoids to estimate how much water is in the pool after six hours. So this thousand gallons is our starting amount. And then we just add a whole bunch of water. So if we're going to use trapezoids, our first trapezoid would have a width of two. And actually, I think it's helpful to sketch this one out too. So 0, 0, 246, and we can be very rough, 453, 657. So our first trapezoid is actually going to be a triangle because the height of one of the bases is zero. The Sorry, not the height. The base length is zero. So anyway, the trapezoid formula is um, the area, the average of the two bases. So the two bases are 0 and 46. So 0 plus 46 over 2 times um, the, the height, which is measured sideways here. So the height would be 2. Um, I'm going to make that 0 a little bit nicer to look at. And then our next trapezoid uses this same length again. So it's still going to use the, that one is also going to use the 46. Yeah, let me get a different color. So this is our next trapezoid. It's also going to use the 46 and it will use the 53. So here's our next trapezoid. That one also has a width or a height of two. Um, and the two bases, if I average the two bases, would be 46 plus 53 over two and then times two for the height. Um, and then I do another trapezoid here. This is gonna be our last one. And um, that would also have a height of two. It would use the 53 um, and the 57. Um, and so here's our last trapezoid. So what we notice in our table is that we're using all of the middle values twice, um, but we're um, only using the um, endpoint values once. So if I kind of factor this a little bit, and so I'd have 2 over 2, and then I'd have 0 plus 2 46s, because there's a 46 here and a 46 here, plus 2 53s, there's a 53 here and here, plus 57. I don't know if it's worth memorizing this, but this is kind of a shortcut for trapezoids. You're always going to use the, the middle values twice and then the endpoints once. The thing you want to be careful of is that you can't really use this shortcut unless your trapezoids are all of equal width, which they don't have to be. So um, it's not really that much of a time saver. But um, don't be freaked out that you're using the 46 in two different trapezoids and you're using the 53 in two different trapezoids. It's because um, it's basically a dot to dot and we're using that more than once. All right. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that the question asked how much water is in the pool after 46 hours. So I'm going to have to do this math. This would be what, 92, and this would be. 106 plus 57. Okay. Um, uh, 92 plus 106, sorry, would be 198 plus 57 would be... To 55. Um, that's how much water was pumped into the pool, but it already had a thousand gallons in it. So the pool would have a thousand gallons plus 255 gallons. Um, so be careful of those kinds of problems where they're giving you a starting amount because you need to take that into account as well. All right. So that is a summary of 6 1 and 6 2.